Hey, everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Andrew. Hello. Hello there. Face me. Well, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? I'm Andrew. I'm uh, an Enterprise Mobility MVP. So I'm an Intune Graph PowerShell nerd. Um, and I'm in the northeast of England, currently cold and windy. Northeast of England. Always windy up there. Well, it's, yeah. you know, I know that there's there are a couple things, uh, you know, enterprise mobility MVPs. There's a bunch of them over the last several months that have switched over to security or have become dual MVPs in security. But one of the things is that, well, you know, most of the categories of MVPs kind of it's like a bucket that includes a lot of things. Enterprise mobility, there's a lot of different pieces that are within that category. So what's like your central focus? I like the, the graph PowerShell automation side. So um, I spend most day buried deep inside a VS Code terminal trying to work out what, what this button click is doing when I click it in the, in, the, in the GUI and how I can automate it to not have to do that again. Very cool. Well, that's like, so that's like traditionally, so I mean, in the automation side that covers kind of DevOps, that covers, I mean, there's a lot, in that space so kind of what's your, what your day job like what kind of stuff do you do you work on are you client-based is it consulting it's i i've just recently moved so i've been you know i've worked my way up from you know service desk desktop sysadmin all the way through um through, through the hard way as i say <laughs> um done my stint in consulting and now i'm on the product side so i'm looking at the the technical things we need to do um and automating whatever we can so i'm not i'm not customer facing i let other people deal with that yeah it, it i was interviewing somebody that was an enterprise mobility uh, mvp yesterday we were talking about like how uh, uh you know like the traditionally the people that i know that started in like desktop support so back in the old old days of setting up you know the 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 desktop systems and then eventually laptops um for new employees running cables when necessary kind of doing it all for it for a company that they evolved into this similar space where two of my friends are now CTOs that started in help desk support. Mm -hmm. And one of them was a music major and then <laughs> just was really good at it and moved his way up. But it, it's a, uh, is that kind of like your, your background as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, desktop support, you've got to be jack of all trades, really. You've got to know the window side. You've got to have an idea of the server side, the networking side as well as you know how the cables all plug in and everything you've, you've, and you've got the the user facing part which in the EUC space is kind of critical even when you get to consulting that way you're still you're still speaking to the users the users are just IT people rather than mm -hmm. you know a, a secretary at a desk but that's what i find is the difference you've got your your you know diehard sysadmins who don't like talking to people and then you've got your desktop people who are a bit better at, at explaining terminology to the users yeah well what was what was your path to becoming an mvp because you're are you when did you receive yours uh last year july august okay so you're you're still not a full year in in the role no no i'm re renewal time now yeah what, what was your what was your path to becoming an mvp um when i moved into consulting i started blogging on you know issues i was finding fixes i was finding and then I've always been into PowerShell scripting. So as soon as, you know, a customer has a problem, I'll be like, oh, I, can, I think I can script that. We can automate this. Um, and it was then sharing the scripts. So, you know, I'd have a, a folder full of scripts from various jobs and stuff. Like that. Might as well share them. You know, I'm, I'm probably not going to use them again, but other people have a turn. And it kind of went from there. People love that kind of stuff. You know, there's... Yeah, my first company started. I mean, we started where we were doing kind of the same thing. We, you know, free tools, free add-ons, and then we started collecting, and we got started to get a lot of traffic. It's a uh, you know great way to uh, one giving stuff out for free. People love that for some reason. Um, <laughs> but when you have like novel approaches to solving common problems, and and then we started finding other people with you know, trying to solve the same problem but with a different approach. 
but we started sharing that stuff, becoming kind of a, a clearinghouse for free add-ons to this platform. This is back in the IBM technology, that it, world, not in the Microsoft space. But that whole concept, you know, I, I just absolutely loved that because that's a great way, not just to become an MVP, if that's something that's your goal is, you know, sharing your work, giving that stuff out there. Just from a pure networking standpoint, getting to know people, finding people of like minds, you know, making connections, it's fantastic that way of it's, it's, being connected. It's the thought that some, someone's using that script that you've written, and it, it just gives you that kind of that, that warm feeling inside that you, you've helped other people. The, the MVP is just, just a bonus. I just like, you know, if I've written the script, it seems just a shame that I've used it and no one else can see how good it is. I want, to, I want to let other people have a play. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, you know it's it's interesting in the in the space. I mean, there's it, it's you know Microsoft is regularly hires you know people from the community. A lot of MVPs that are now over uh, in inside the the fold as blue badges, um, but that there's you know and yet they're still they're constantly encouraging all of us to you know, like submit more names, find people of like mind that are out there sharing, doing this kind of stuff. Have you submitted many names? Have you? Are people reaching out to you now from your network and saying, hey, how did you do this? How do I become an MVP? I've had more people reach out, yes. And I noticed that as soon as you get the MVP badge, people come to you for help a lot more as well, which is which is always nice. Um, not like my, my knowledge has changed in the past year, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm all, always happy to help people. So I'm the more the merrier. You know, they used to hand out, uh, this is a while back, but uh, they used to hand out um, like, Microsoft support cards, like business card things with like a free hour of tech support or something. They gave that out to new MVPs, at least the first couple of years that I was in the system. And, um, but you know, I, I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't heard about that in, in, a, in a while. And that was the idea. Cause what happens is if you're wearing any of your branded garb, you're sitting on an airplane, inevitably somebody's asked you, it's like, Oh yeah, you work for Microsoft. Like, no, no, no. I'm, you know, I, I'm a partner with, and I'm a Microsoft MVP, so I'm an expert in some, and then they start asking you about something. Totally yeah, how, how do you fix my printer? Yeah. <laughs> totally unrelated to your area of focus. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I don't have that ability though, because it, it probably does fall into my area of focus. Well, that's a lot of the problems that, well, see, that's the thing. I mean, people would then say it was go into issues that they're having now i hear more about uh questions about azure i'm like yeah i'm not the guy but here's three names of people that you should go check out that will respond to you yeah. but that is I, you know that that is a a, a benefit though i mean you, you see somebody who's an mvp and even if it's not their area i mean you and i are we're connecting with other people other mvps and you know we are more likely to be able to know somebody who might know that answer and refer them so I yeah, think absolutely. It's, it's a it's a it's a tight community where everyone kind of knows each other. I mean, I've only I've not even been a year yet, and I already feel like I know half of the enterprise mobility ones and loads outside that. Well, it's always one of the hardest things for somebody coming approaching. Um, it, you know, it, is dropping the fear to to move past it, ask the questions. And that's the hardest for humans to do that to to reach out when you have questions. But uh, you know, MVPs are some of the most uh, you know social beings within the ecosystem so you know we're we're usually happy to to help out and i'm i honestly people it's like don't apologize come up ask a question if i'm busy like i'll let you know it's like hey i don't i don't have time to respond right now or you know if i don't respond to the email right away it's because i'm working on other stuff but eventually i will respond to that um but of course other people that know me know how to catch me i'm not <laughs> going to give out that information how to <laughs> You know, funny enough, I don't respond to uh, to text messages. Like I've been texting you. My wife will tell me that. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, yeah, 32 texts. Oh, you know. I'm, you know, I'm the same. Yeah, you, you email me. You'll get a reply probably within 24 hours. Send me a text. It could be three, four days. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it's now, it, you know, through, you know, chat within the, the monitor. But, yeah, I'm in front of the monitors all day. And the phone is charging over to the side, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm old fashioned that way. I like to use my phone to make calls. Yeah, I don't understand the whole stare Snapchat, at your phone in public Snapchat areas stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, people who walk around on speakerphone, it's literally, it's literally a phone put up to your ear. Yeah. 
Well, let's go. Well, what other what what topics are kind of hot topics for you right now with everything that Microsoft is constantly pushing out there? What are, what are kind of your big topics that you're speaking about and writing about right now? Uh, my my big thing at the moment is is kind of infrastructure as a code. So uh, the, the recent one's been um, pushing out apps through WinGet with a like a pipeline approach. Um, at work, I'm trying to automate Intune deployments using a pipeline, uh, and then you know push out upgrades across customers using that method, so you don't have to sit in the GUI and, and copy paste settings. Mm -hmm. That's 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 my area of interest. There's been a lot of talk on drivers this week, but um, I'll let AutoPatch deal with that. <laughs> well, that's not my world at all. So I mean, this is all uh, you know, learning here about th this stuff. It was, it, it's funny as I go and I again, I've been been around. I've been in IT my entire career, 32 years, and uh, you know, sitting and listening to people talk about it. You know, it takes a, a few moments to register. I go back and I, I just remember all my buddies that were doing the help desk support of all of the you know the hundreds of people within our our company and kind of what they're going into kind of equating it to that mm -hmm. um, but uh yeah before the flashbacks hit that's right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the uh it's yeah it's just it, 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 well that's just like we're just, just remember people coming up and asking questions for an mvp and asking for you know uh, questions about azure or problems that they're having i more likely to be able to answer questions around you know why one drive is not syncing and that kind of stuff but get in and ask questions about sharepoint about teams about the collaboration technology it's like hey i'll talk your ear off but when you get in and start talking about driver updates and about automating <laughs> in tune deployments like excellent well that sounds great See, it's the opposite for me because voice has always been that bit I've never gone anywhere near. So as soon as people talk about Teams voice and stuff, I just kind of go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that no, that's <laughs> true for for a lot of us too. There's two kinds of uh, you know Teams. There like Teams MVPs. There's people that are on the collaborate collaboration side, and then there's the unified communications, the telephony side of things, which is a whole different skill set. I wish I had some of those skills. Um, I, I actually have a conversation with like I just found out that. Uh, uh, there's an integration with one of the major uh, mobile phone carriers in the U.S. And I'm not sure if it's global, but with integration of teams, I just saw the announcement um, and I'm like, I want to find out, I want to be able to answer those questions. But, uh, you know, for somebody that I spent the first half of my career in telecom world, so working for the phone company, so not doing telephony stuff, doing IT stuff, but um, close enough. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'd like to be able to answer some of those questions. But of course, now that we have Chat GPT, and you know, <laughs> you don't need to. Yeah, the answers just... are just there, right? Yeah. Whether they're right or not, that doesn't matter as long as, uh, as, long as it looks like. That's always been true about search. <laughs> you know. Well, it's, it's funny you've got Clippy behind you. That just it makes me think it's it's uh it really is kind of the Clippy 2.0. Yeah, they should really put Clippy on it. I think so too. When somebody just needs to go and take the initiative and create the app, that's the the, the Clippy interface into <laughs> ChatGPT. I'm surprised yeah. somebody hasn't done it yet. See, the problem is now that that previously we've been on customer calls quickly googling things quietly, and now the customers ChatGPTing it and querying what you're telling them, and it's <laughs> it's going to get a whole lot harder. Yeah. Well, that is to your earlier point too, is whether it's accurate or not. I don't know if you've done that. I'm like, I've, I've gone and I have found things where it's providing, uh, oh, and here's uh, the documentation, wrong, broken links, wrong links. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very repetitive. It's like generic. It's like, how is it building these? I I guess it's learning, but I have found a lot of wrong answers. It 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 guesses and then makes it sound right. And you, you type it, it gives you a PowerShell command. You type it, oh, that command doesn't exist. It never has. Like, yeah, but it looks so real. <laughs> Well, it's I, I'm what I like about it is that you know it is a great way to uh, to unblock you if you're stuck on things, but you can't rely on 100 percent that of what it says. It's more of looking through. So I look at it as a is a great uh, uh, you know tool, um, but ultimately you still have to go through and pick out the things that are correct or that are useful. Yeah. You've got to know what to ask it, and then you've got to be able to understand what it's spitting out to be able to pick out, you know, the bit that you're stuck on. As an idea generator, as a way to point you in different directions, it is yep. a great tool. So 
Yeah, yes. I'm sure. I use it. I use it the other day to help me with a bit of regex because that's that's like black magic that stuff. So I thought, right, that's it. <laughs> this, How did this it do? Did, yeah, because that's pretty tricky it, to mess things yeah, up. Yeah, it, it wasn't bad. It put me in. It didn't fix it, but it put me well on the right direction. Hmm. Well, see, that well, that's fantastic. I mean, that's that's what you want. I mean, you hmm. hear people using it to create like power automate, you know, complete, you know, flows. And which is interesting. I mean, like anything, you've got to test it and see if it is it actually giving you back what you wanted within that. But if it can speed up a lot of that process and get smarter over time, then what a what an incredible tool. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's it's helping us do our job better rather than doing our job for us. Yeah. Very cool. So what kind of stuff do you do in the community? Are you very active in user group? Are you doing a lot of events? Uh, we've got, there's a, a large engine group that I'm a, a contributor for. Um, events, I'm trying to, but obviously it's quite a niche niche area. Here you see most people just go, that's not as attractive as security or DevOps or something. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to learn how to build Windows, let's be honest. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on that front. I don't know. You, if you find the right event, you know, for, for that, I bet that's the kind of sleeper topic that you go in there and find that you've got the standing room only session uh, you know, on mm -hmm. that topic. Uh, you know, uh, when I started out, so I've been for almost 12 years at MVP when I started out as a SharePoint MVP, and I was one of the only people out there talking about the topic of governance. So not just building it, but how are we actually managing what we're building and what, what is the governance uh, you know, the oversight of the things that we're building and what does that look like? And, and I'd be like the only governance topic on the agenda for an entire conference. And you'd get, you know, 20, 30 people in some rooms and I'd have 150 people in, in <laughs> that room. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of hunger for that content. So sometimes being the outlier, that's how you make change happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, I'm, I'm the wrong side of the pond, which probably doesn't help either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it sounds like in-person events are coming back with the fury over here in the U.S., but um, starting to see them slowly pick up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they're getting there over here, but I don't think quite the, the, the speed that you've got over there. Yeah. Well, we'll see. There's a huge event that's happening, Microsoft-focused event happening in Las Vegas in May and a um, lot of questions of whether the numbers will, the people will turn out for that in, in the numbers again, if, you know, I'd love to get back to normal, yeah. whatever yeah. that is. But well, Andrew, <laughs> well, it was great connecting with you and uh, getting to know you for folks that want to reach out and connect with you. What are the best ways to reach you via in social? Uh, LinkedIn. That's the, the main place where I hang out. Um, I'm on Mastodon as well, but um, finding me might be tricky. So, so start with LinkedIn and take it from there. Okay. Well, all, all the links are on my website as well to all my various social medias. And of course, I'll have all of your links that are out on the, the blog post to point people in your direction as well. And uh, well, Andrew, it's really uh, great talking to you. And yes, uh, we'll hope to uh, see you at an event in the future. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> wow. Wow.